Hello folks, in this video we're going to take a look at using markers and different kinds of level controls available in SampleWrench. So to start with, I've already loaded up a sound sample for us, our favorite fire sign quote. I'll play that really quickly. Spacebar. Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Well, count on us to be there. Okay. Now, you notice right now I have this on effect all. So the entire sample is going to be adjusted. We have already looked at um, the in view and the effect mouse. So I want to look at the marker version, right? So we mentioned this at the outset that you can set the range between markers zero and one as an edit area. And this has some very uh, specific uses, very advantageous uses, where you need to get very, very precise with where your edits are going to be. So there's a couple things we want to look at. The first thing is this little auto locate function. You can think of this as sort of creating a grid of acceptable places where a marker will be set. This also works for loops. But basically we have a multiplier. So, you know, you could say every even, every 10th, every hundredth, there is an offset to deal with on that. So you could say skip over the, the first thousand sample points, um, a, mix, a maximum and a minimum level that would be acceptable. This is good if you're looking for things like zero crossings. And speaking of which, we can see if uh, the slope, in other words, if the signal is rising positive or falling negative, or if it's right around zero, at, at a, uh, for example, at a peak. I'm not going to use that, but this, this is a uh, uh, sort of a possibility. Instead, I'm gonna go right into the markers. First note, marker show is enabled. So marker set. Now, I can give a name to my marker. I can just immediately come in and uh, put a position in here. I can use the auto locate, check this uh, button right here. I want to make a new marker. So I'm going to check this new marker button and it will all automatically give me a marker number. It'll do them from low to high. So this automatically gives me marker zero and I can give this a name. You know, if uh, I have several markers, I got a couple dozen markers, I might want to give them specific names to help identify them. We're not going to need that right now. So I'm just going to set up zero with no name. As you can see, we have some other buttons here, delete, delete all markers, but I'm just going to grab mouse. So I'm going to use the mouse to select an area. And I'll just come in. Boom. Now notice what happens, right? Zero. There's zero marker. If I grab right above that, I can move the marker with the mouse. Okay. Now let me go in and I'm going to grab another marker. New marker. So now here's my old one. And you, you'll be able to scroll through these and see the markers, but grab a new marker, number one. Again, I'm going to use the mouse. So I've now defined these two. And notice again, if I want to move this one, it's always right off of the number. You can move him around too. All right. If I select effect marker, then it's going to be this area between marker zero and one that gets affected. Okay. Well, count on us. Well, count on us. Well, count on us. All right. That should be pretty obvious, right? The, the space bar is play effect, right? Space bar, play effect. And that's what I did. I hit the space bar. So this looped three times through here. Um, and that's all we got, right? We didn't get the whole thing. Whereas if we came over and, you know, hit play and tire. Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Well, count on us to be there. Okay. So if I do an edit, it's just going to be here, just on this piece of it. Just to remind you what that was, I'll hit spacebar again. Well, count on us. Well, okay. So what kind of things can we do? So we're going to look at level control today. So we're going to go over the functions and we have a bunch of different things we can do. So the most obvious thing is just gain. 
So we've got decibel values that we can set over here. So you can just take this, move it up, give it some boost, give it some cut. Uh, 20 dB is a factor of 10 in amplitude over here. This represents a voltage. Now you can, for fine control, use the cursor keys. And this will go up by tenths of a decibel. Right, so if I came in here and I knocked it down a little bit. Right, so just this area gets dropped down. All right, let me undo that. So that's fairly straightforward. Now we can also do a maximize. So this will look for the highest possible signal in that range, in the effect range, figure out what the gain needs to be, and everything gets multiplied by that new gain. So there's the peak right there. So it's right below 100%. And this entire thing comes up. We can also come in here and scale to any, right? That's, this is a normalized thing. And this is a percentile. So I might decide, well, you know, I want this to be scaled to, well, let's say, if I bring it down, I'll bring it down here to around 20-ish. So this is going to bring it down to about, you know, a little, little thing like this, right? Boom. So the whole thing gets brought down to 10%. So this peak is roughly 10%. So here's my time and amplitude printout, so to speak. So if I go right to there, you can see we're getting just about 10. We were getting just about 10%. Okay. All right. Other things we can do. I've got a compressor, I've got an envelope generator, and a noise gate. Now the compressor and the noise gate are kind of similar in the way they work, um, so that we can have a better idea of what's going on here. I am going to uh, go back to effect all, so we can see what's happening on this whole thing. Um, it doesn't matter if these markers are here or not, because, because we're in this mode, it's sort of going to be ignored. We can get rid of them if you want. Okay, let's take a look at the compressor. So this is a fairly standard compressor. We have a threshold compression ratio, attack and release times. There's a, a series of um, presets we can use. You can load and save your own presets to disk. So I'm just going to grab this sort of general purpose compressor here. And you can see that there were some changes in the amplitude. Right? Okay. Um, makeup gain, if you're familiar with most compressors, they have a makeup gain. Um, makeup gain is not on that compressor because you have the level controls and you might, when you're done, want to do something like um, like a normalize, you know, for percentage. So that gives you a little bit more flexibility. And if it's something you're always going to do, you can create a macro to do that combination. So it's, it's all there. It's all possible. All right. Other things you can do. Um, envelope generator is pretty wild. So you basically draw what you want your gain curve to be. So this happens to be a fade in. So plus 30 dB minus 30 dB. So this is going to fade in the signal. Here's a preview button. You can listen to it. I'm going to just do it um, so that you can also see it as well as hear it. All right, so you notice how this is obviously reduced in amplitude. Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in this city of the future? Well, count on us to be there. All right. Let's undo that. Now, getting back to that again. There is a, a unique function in here called trace. And what it's going to do is create a coarse outline of your signal. Right? This is basically the sort of gain characteristic. And then you can invert this. Now, what's happening is... Wherever it's quiet, you're going to get a high gain. And whenever it's loud, so like this piece right here is this dip. 
it's basically approximating what you would need to maximize the gain. So this dip right here and this dip right here are these two things. And then we see up here, right, this is where it's really quiet. There's just some background noise and that gets cranked up. And this thing just gets totally maxed out in terms of volume level. Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Well, count on us to be there. Now, you could probably hear this background noise, right? But if what, if you're, you know, what you're looking to do is really maximize uh, this overall sound sample so that you can hear every little thing in it, that's one possibility. That's one thing you can do. And then if you wanted to, you could come in here and clean this up, right? You could either use the mouse or the markers and define these areas and then mute them, right? These sort of um, little noisy areas where it should, should in fact be quiet. And we're back to our original signal. All right. So those are your, so your, your level controls. Noise, noise gate is similar. You have similar kinds of settings. Um, and basically what, that, what that's going to do is if uh, a sound is below a certain level, it's just going to turn it off, just like a, a standard studio noise gate would do. Okay, so you have a lot of flexibility there. So now we know how to use markers, and we know the basic level controls. Next up, we're going to look at equalization, bass and treble controls, parametric EQ, filters, all that good stuff. See you then.